On offense for the first time tonight. Yeah, that punt was a bit wobbly. Uh, kind of spun around a bit weird in the air, but it bounced and, like you said, get a Rhode Island bounce, it would get an extra 10 yards or so. So Stony Brook is now going to start it inside their own 25-yard line. Tyquell Fields and Isaiah White in the backfield right there. You get Andrew Trent to the right, Anderson and Constant to the left. Yeah, this offense is going to replay the success it had last year against Rhode Island, where it ran for over 350 yards and had five touchdowns. So here's the first snap, the handoff to White. White immediately met right there by the defenders. It's going to be shook around. And it's going to be about a gain of a yard on the play. Yeah, Fury likes doing this early with his QB and uh, running back. They like doing a bit of read option there. This time going to the back, getting not getting too, ma too many yards there. I see how that plays. That's definitely one to understand. Now Nick Anderson will be alone to his left. The tackle was made by Gennetti for the Rams. And so it will be second and nine for the Seawolves at the 25-yard line. Looks like we may be getting a little bit of an eagle eye formation here. Here's the snap. Fakes the handoff, gives it to Trent, makes a catch, gets a first down and more, gets it inside the 40-yard line. And that was a great read there by Fields. He faked the handoff, read the play back, saw Trent on a slant, caught his. Uh, Trent stayed up at the right, on the near side of the field for 10 yards. They're going rush here, immediately handed off to Isaiah White, busting forward, able to get a good amount of yards. He makes about seven on the carry. White hit him with the spin cycle there inside, just spun around and get those extra yarders. Good job by him, go, progressing the ball forward there. They're pressing Rhode Island as far as they can, trying to catch them off guard to get their offense hot very quickly. It'll be second and three now from the 47 yard line. Actually it'll be second and six, that was a six yard gain. And here's the snap, they'll hand it off again to White, or actually Fields will take it himself. And Tyquell Fields gets the first down and more. Could be dragged down from behind. Gets into Rhode Island territory and goes inside the 45 to the 43 yard line. And that was a great job, job there by Fields. Reading the play, faking the handoff, keeping it for himself. And a great block there by 87, Nick Anderson. And they're going on the far side. Another quick snap once more. A delayed hand up to Isaiah White. He'll press forward a couple of extra yards. Looks like he'll gain about six more. Yeah, that a halfback draw there, they're giving it to White and White pressing up the field. Zachary Lucas and Isaiah White come out, Tyson Lawton and Isaiah Givens will come in. Tyson Lawton had a touchdown last week to start off Stony Brook on the board. Yeah, Stony so Brook going back to the Eagle Eye formation, have three receivers out there and lost in the back. Five yard gain sets up second and five now at the Rhode Island 38 yard line. A lot you could do here on Rhode Island Terrier. Run back, maybe even fake again or go for the pass. Constant set in motion. Here's a snap, fakes a hand up, throws it over the head to Constant. He makes the catch, goes inside the 30 yard line, pressing forward near the 25 for another Stanley Brook first down. And that was a nice catch by Constant there. That one a bit high, so he had to jump in the air and get it. He grabbed it down on the near side, uh, just trying to juke past some defenders as if it moved the ball to the Rhode Island 31. Yeah, and Tagwell Fields has definitely read those receivers very carefully so far on this drive. Rhode Island 26, actually. Yeah, he knows how to work it. Fields looking to set the snap, getting some more instructions from their coach, Coach Priori. Getting its 125th win against Wagner two weeks ago. Here's the snap, hands it off to Tyson Lawton. Lawton is able to bust up the mill, goes a tiny bit of a beast mode right there. That's right, Lawton, Lawton was headstrong there, going head first in, truck and some defenders there. Makes about a nine yard gain on the play, setting up second and short. Another quick handoff to Lawton. He gets the first down and more. Cuts it inside. Goes inside the 10 yard line to the 9 as Stony Brook is now first and goal and knocking on the door of their first score of the game. And Lawton feeding off the strong offensive line there. Good blocks by McLean, Nunez, and Dittori there to get uh, to Lawton some running room on the right side of the field. All three receivers stand on the left. Here's another handoff to Lawton. Our fields is going to take it himself. Not a smart move right there. He is swallowed up by three defenders and he loses yards on the play. Yeah, that was safety, Brian Campbell there for Wood Island, being one of the defenders there, along with uh, their linebacker, Johnson. Those two just read Fields' eyes perfectly, were able to stop them. So it looks like it slows down the quick drive for Stony Brook on this, on this play so far as they back them up for a couple of yards, setting up... Fields has four receivers on, on the line. They got four receivers set up. Here's the snap. They hand it off to Lawton. Lawton does get a couple of the yards back. Just be sh one yard shy of the 15 of the 10 yard line. It's going to be now third and goal from the 11. 
yeah, interesting decision here. Fields to be on silence. You appear he wants him to do is third down, but you're in you're in the opponent's eleven. You can do a lot of things. You could try going on with the run run game, which is working. Maybe try to do a quick pass. You definitely gotta be smart how it plays out. So here's Fields looking to throw. Got some time. Throws to the end zone to Constant, and did he make the catch? No, he did not. Oh, it looks like he made the catch, but he, oh, the ref saying that he fumbled there while he had possession of it, thus. Uh, discounting it from being a catch. And it looks like he may have bobbled the catch yeah. on the play. Had he not had he had complete control, that would have been a touchdown. Yeah, that was great defensive pressure there from Rhode Island there. It looks like that was Brown in the backfield with him. And the refs are going to blow a whistle here. So they're actually going to take a look to see whether or not Gene Constant had control. Remember, in college football, it only takes one foot with complete control in the end zone for it to be good. That's right, and to me it looked like Constant had possession. As we saw, he did a vertical to the end zone. Fields got in, put a dot perfectly in his hands. It's more of the, the defense and how Constant landed that could determine whether or not this was a catch or it touched the ground, thus ruining it incomplete. Yes, definitely. I mean, yeah, we definitely understand how it seems like that, and that's a timeout is being taken. We'll stick it here to see whether or not the refs are going to overturn this and give Constant his second touchdown of the season, or if they're going to have to let Stony Brook kick the field goal here. It would be from 29 yards out. Nick Courtney and the special teams are still on the field, but the refs are still taking their time, observing to see whether or not Constant had control of it. Yeah, and once again, that was uh, their nickel back, uh, Quadir Brown there, uh, adding pressure for Constant. He already has two broken up passes in his season, so you know he wants to add another one to his resume. Yes, definitely. If we understand how that sort of situation would play out right there, you've seen how if you've seen how these passing plays for Tyquan Fields has definitely looked pretty about average, but it gets the job done eventually. You've seen how Stony Brook is able to drive the ball down the field from their own 24-yard line. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, Sunberg getting about 37 yards on the After rush. So they overturn the call, and Gene Constant gets a touchdown for the Sea Wolves, and Stony Brook strikes first. And that was a great job there at Constant, being able to maintain possession while Brown was all over him. He was right at the edge of the end zone, and he had both hands on it as he rolled on the ground, keeping possession like that. It's a great job, great play. Even I thought that was a good one right there. I couldn't tell well enough to see it was a bobble, but the refs saw that was a touchdown. And now kick, Nick Courtney will kick the extra point. It is up, and it is good. So Stony Brook strikes first on a master bowl drive right there that took four and a half minutes. 11 plays and 76 yards, and a good job right there by Stony Brook to strike first. And we've seen how it's taken effect for both teams so far. Cloudy day here in Villanova. So we have Daniel Smith now and his team. Here's the snap. He's going to throw a deep one down the field to his running back, and that was wide open. And Heslock trying to make the initial tackle, in which he will. And DeWill Barley was just exposing that defense of Stony Brook right there. Nobody took an eye on him. Yeah, they were sending the blitz there on third down, as we said. Super love staying aggressive there. So, so, uh, so what, they'll know if they were able to capitalize on their great pass. Also precision there, in order to get the pass down on the far side. Had a great run there from his back in order to get about 20 yards or so on the play. Now, they'll know we'll have it in Stony Brook territory at the 41-yard line. <laughs> Two receivers set up as Bartley is in the, back, in the backfield with Daniel Smith. Stony Brook needs to keep an eye on all of those players right there. That's usually what they can do. So here's the snap, the handoff to Barley. Barley finds an open field for a first down and more. And he's able to and his tackle inside the 25 yard line for another field of a first down. Well, welcome back, EJ Finner, and coming back from injuries. Missed the majority of the season so far, and he is able to make the open field tackle on Barley. He's been impressive so far in his last two carries, over 50 yards, well, on the catch and the carry. And uh, he's been uh, the contribution so far for 50 yards of Villanova's last offense. And EJ Finner, in that open field tackle, went right for the ball, almost coughed the ball free from Barley, but still made the open field tackle and prevented a touchdown. So now Villanova will be, have the ball at the 24 yard line of Stony Brook. Three receivers set up, actually, we have two. And here's Snap, hand up to the other running back. That running back finds an open hole, and he's tackled inside the five, and he extends to the pylon for a Villanova touchdown. TDIO Durajai is able to rush in. For the 24-yard score, that is his first touchdown of the season 
as the Villanova running back, and Villanova goes on the board. Four, 13 to 7, 13 32 left to go in the second quarter. T for Duraja, he hasn't really been a key factor for um, rushing the ball so far for the Wildcats so far this year. That's only his 14th carry, but with that, he's possibly close to 100 yards in the season with that touchdown. TD very fittingly earning his nickname there of TD for a reason. Able to rush on the outside, he got a great touchdown run there after after that good handoff there. And as you said, not a lot of playing time, but now with the absence of Justin Covington, Villanova's original main running back, you're definitely gonna see TD do a lot more rushing and in his words, try to get a lot more TDs. Well, apparently the Stony Brook defense right there in the beginning of the second quarter did not find themselves in a good mood. They were exposed completely, and had they found that running back in the first play in the second quarter, the Stony Brook would have probably received the ball back as this game is still in time. But unfortunately, that's not the case right now, and Bill Nova takes their first lead of the day.